Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nychronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be taking a look at my thoughts on Season of the Deep in Destiny 2. And so I'm going to go over all of the different facets currently in Season of the Deep, the different activities, the different weapons and armors, and the stuff that I think are missing, and of course, going to give you a final verdict. And a TLDR is, I think this season is pretty good, but the reasons why and the things that are missing are going to be very important. And in general, I also wanted to talk about Destiny 2 as we lead into the end of the Light and Dark Saga at the end of the Final Shape. And the first thing I wanted to point out is that I found that Lightfall wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. First of all, obviously everybody knows a lot of holes in the story, not a lot of questions were answered, and we really don't know what's going on with a lot of it. Compared to other major DLCs like Forsaken and Shadowkeep, it wasn't really what we expected and it didn't really hold up. And that's important because the following seasons, I find that I'm not playing or really caring about most of the things coming out of Lightfall, meaning that the current DLC pretty much stands by itself. Whereas in pre previous seasons, you'd obviously be playing more of the Witch Queen stuff the following seasons. Moving on to the season of the Deep, first up, let's talk about the storyline. First of all, we're going to be returning to Titan, obviously the methane-filled planet with Sloane, who is still alive, and who is, spoilers, is taken. And obviously the story revolves around this idea that she is kind of falling her into her own insanity as the strong soldier, but obviously she has feelings and we need to help her find those. And more accurately, we're trying to save Asa, a giant whale, which could be a worm god or some kind of paracausal creature, and we need to get her some special coral that I assume that she snorts to then have visions that will help us get into the Traveler? Maybe I'm not paying attention to the story very much, but that's kind of how it seems what's going on. And we have to save her from Titan and the darkness, and that'll help us with the story, I guess? Either way, big fish, big cute. Okay. Up next are the new activities. There are three to four major activities. First up, we have Salvage, the six-player activity, and honestly, this is probably one of the worst parts of this DLC, is that it's uninteresting, slow-paced, there are some fun mechanics, but as a six-player activity, I shouldn't be bored. There should be so many enemies I don't know what to do with, but it's boring. All the enemies are just getting spawn camp, the objectives are kind of far away, and I'm doing a lot of running. It's it's not very interesting. Not terrible, but I definitely would expect something different, especially with things like Menagerie, six player activities, I have a lot more respect for. After that, the Deep Dive. I actually find to be a lot better than Salvage. First of all, it's more challenging. There's modifier and power disadvantage, which I think is very important. I'm glad that they brought that more to the forefront of the harder activities, and it gets harder as you go down, especially with the tier five or tier seven stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Although I thought it would be even more interesting is if it was infinite, where you can kind of go down in infinitely until it was so hard you couldn't even fight the enemies. But then again, I'm sure somebody's just gonna glitch through a wall and uh, ruin it for the rest of us. After that, we have fishing. It's, it's fishing. It's exactly what we expect. It's basic. You just listen for the sound and you pull the fish up and then you take that to get exotic and legendary gear. And you can get a pretty decent amount pretty quickly, but it's it's very boring. It's fishing. And then public events interrupted every once in a while. It's, it's fishing. I can't really expect much from fishing, <laughs> but maybe there should have been like a bit more of an interesting mini game in it. I don't know. It also really doesn't feel like you're being rewarded for perfect catches. It probably does affect the numbers, but it doesn't feel like it. Following that, let's talk about the new dungeon, Ghost of the Deep, which I think is very good for a lot of different reasons. First of all, I really like how many enemies there are in second and third part. There's just so many enemies everywhere. I'm spamming abilities, using ad clearing weapons. I have to use DPS for bosses, and it's just a lot of chaos and a lot of fun. Just makes you feel great to obliterate everything without feeling like you die instantly, which is a very important comparison. You want a lot of enemies to feel exciting, but you don't want to die all the time. And frankly, the bosses probably have too much health. Uh, last time I played it, we were able to two-phase both bosses, which is like, oh, okay, wow, when you get really focused on the DPS, you can make it work, but the final boss having more health in this dungeon with three players than Nezarek in the six-player raid is bad. That should not be how it is. When it comes to the mechanics, um, they're pretty simple to understand, and I think that they're kind of interesting. You see a symbol, you match the symbol to the thing, you bring it, you kill the special light bearer, and move on. And of course, the boss fight has that extra put the ring in the symbol, which I think is kind of cool. Unfortunately, we'll probably not see this mechanic ever again. When it comes down to the loot in the dungeon, it's all amazing as well. Every single weapon in this dungeon is good. It has some weird combination, something unique, and something meta for the game, and I recommend all of them. And the exotic weapon is interesting, very niche, and does woven male stuff. That could be cool, but we'll see how it turns out. 
And the armor looks amazing. Everybody loves it, lots of rainbow shaders, and a lot of people are going for it. Following that, let's talk about the new guns and armor across the whole DLC. Honestly, I think that there are a lot of amazing new guns, and the majority of them are craftable from the new activities, from fishing, from the Last Wish, and the dungeon. Because if you don't know, Last Wish now came in as craftable option. And a lot of the Last Wish weapons have a lot of combinations we've never seen before, like having double damage perks on them, with kinetic tremors plus kill clip at the same time, having explosive payload plus incandescent on that bow. That void auto rifle has repulsor brace plus destabilizing rounds. Lots of great perk combinations, and of course there's the bait and switch rockets, both Apex Predator and the one from the dungeon. A lot of really cool stuff. When it comes to the exotic armors and weapons, this is probably where it's the weakest. Um, the armors are all very niche, very weird, I don't expect them to be useful, and the weapons are slightly different than usual, but again I don't expect them to be very meta. Up next, let's talk about what's bad. And the main thing here is that there's nothing new for the major playlist. Crucible, Trials, Comp, Gambit. <laughs> Ball gambit strikes nightfall we got nothing new to be honest it's not surprising but it's totally boring it's you know it's a minor dlc i don't expect to get a new crucible map you know which we only get like once every couple of years but at the same time as a long-term pve player i have literally no reason to play strikes which is supposed to be a major playlist it is not part of my major play and lastly, kind of a miscellaneous thing, I wanted to talk about the state of Destiny 2 in general, kind of the elephant in the room, talking about Destiny 2 power creep and bloat. Now, Destiny 2 has been out for around four and a half, maybe five years now. And in that time, we've collected over 6,000 different items. And this is all the shaders, all the emblems, all the weapons, the ornaments, etc. And I have 5,000 out of those 6,000 items. I have played the game for a very long time, and I have nearly everything that I could possibly want. And that causes a problem because everything new that shows up most of the time is not worth it for me. And as we go forward for the rest of the year of Lightfall and the one to two years that Final Shape will be going on to the end of the light and dark saga for the next two to three years, what do I want? What's useful? How are they going to keep coming up with unique ideas without just making things that are better than everything we've had before? Which originally is why they invented Sunset, to make it so, hey, don't use all of those other stuff all the time. Use some of the new stuff. Go for it. Obviously, Sunset was not a good idea, but at least they tried something different to handle that issue. And you have to understand, what we started with in Destiny 2 was so different than what we have now. Armor was like, you get to choose between recovery and resilience, and that was basically it. Weapons had three slots in them, and the first slot only had two options, and it wasn't random roll. Now our armor has this point system with lots of mods that drastically affect gameplay. Weapons have four slots and an origin trait, sometimes a fifth perk, and now crafted that can have enhanced perks on it. What's the next step? Do we get six perks? Do we get an upgraded enhanced perks? Can we upgrade weapons? Like, where does it go from here? How do you keep giving us stuff that's good that we want without just making it better than everything else? And furthermore, the end of the Light and Dark Saga, which is at the end of Final Shape, which is what they told us is going to be the end of the Light and Dark Saga, what happens after that? Is it going to be Destiny 3? Or is it just going to be another four years of some other crazy storyline? Which is not bad. Obviously, Destiny is a long-term series is good. But where do we go? And how do we have a game last like 10, 15 years? You see other games like World of Warcraft where 95% of the game is useless. Where nobody ever goes and look, big crazy map. But you only end up being in 5% of it. Because the new stuff is always better than the old stuff. So kind of TLDR on this is that why would we care about new stuff if the previous stuff is good enough? And if the new stuff is better, then it completely undervalues everything we've done in the past. It's no wonder people will play Destiny for a few months, stop, and come back a couple years later or a year later. And so switching back to Season of the Deep, my final conclusion, final verdict for the DLC, is that it's quite solid, and I would give it a 7 out of 10. And honestly, 7 out of 10 is a very solid DLC. There's a lot of big DLCs that I really liked, Big expansions like Forsaken, Shadowkeep, Witch Queen, smaller DLCs like Dawn, Black Armory, Opulence, Arrivals that do feel like they're a bit better than this option, but honestly, again, incredible dungeon, lots of great weapons, a cool activity in Deep Dive. Again, I think the biggest thing that's holding it back right now is the fact that Lightfall wasn't as good as other major DLCs. And there you have it. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, concerns, what you think of the current season. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, big thank you to Mom and Dad, Kate Bichal, Wafar and Prez, Joe Baden, Rob Schreier, James Osler, Ethan Hodges, Monty Armstrong, Monday, Stu Bongers, Juno Panther, Casey Reagan, William Peterson, and Benjamin for the support on Patreon. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Zach Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.